Hello everyone, we will continue the topic events and in the previous video, we started with multiple event handler methods. So as a part of that, we have now two event handler methods. One, if we are not passing any input, one, if we are passing wrong input. Our triggering method is only one that is display, which is raising the event no input as well as wrong underscore input. And we registered the event handler method. If we are not giving any input, it will act as a your event handler method. If we are giving input and the input is wrong, it will act as a event handler method. So we registered based upon the condition. Now I will put the breakpoint and we will understand the full flow in the debugging mode so that the topic will give you more more clarity. I am putting a breakpoint. Apparently, I will put the breakpoint in our classes also. In our methods, this is our triggering method. This is our first event handler method. And this is our second event handler method. Now we will go for all three scenarios. Firstly, we will not give any input. Then we will give wrong input. And then we will give correct input. Suppose I am not giving any input. I am executing. You all know whenever I clicked onto this button, start of selection event is triggering. So we have start of selection event. I am as a part of the control is as a part of start of selection event. These two objects are initial as of now. Whenever these two statements will execute, Class 1 object created, now class 2 object created. Now, we are not giving any input. If we will not give any input, so we register this event as event handler method. Okay, done. We registered that event. Else part system will not go to else part. Now, we are calling the triggering method. What is our triggering method? Display. Now, control is in display method. Is our input is initial? Yes, our input is initial. Whenever input is initial, it will raise this event. Whenever it will raise the event, yes, some event handler method is required. And we told this particular method will act as a event handler method. We registered this particular method. So whenever this method, this event will raise, you can see. Now we are raising the event. Whenever this event raised, have you seen automatically control gone to the first event handler method? Why? Why control gone to first event handler method? Because we registered this as a event handler method. Now you can see we have the particular message. Now I will go for second scenario. I am giving wrong input suppose. I will go to execute. Whenever I will go for wrong input, I will go to desktop three, most preferable desktop. So we are creating the objects. So firstly, F6, F6, the two objects created. Now your input is not initial. So system will go to which part? Else part. Now MSG will act as a event handler method. This MSG will act as a event handler method. Now I will do F6. Now we are calling the triggering method. This is our logic for the triggering method. We gave the input. So system will go to which part? Else part. Based upon the input, this is the input. 
it will try to fetch that data from VBAK table. But we gave a wrong input. So whenever this query will execute, size sub RC will be other than zero. I'm doing F6. And you can see size sub RC is other than zero. If size sub RC other than zero, it will raise which particular event? Wrong underscore input. So whenever this event will raise, we require some event handler. And who will act as an event handler? MSG. Because we told this MSG is the event handler method. We registered this particular event handler method. If I am doing F5, now you can see control gone to which particular method? MSG. Control has not gone to message because we told this will act as an event handler. We registered this particular method as an event handler method and we got the message. Please enter correct sales order number. Now we will go for third scenario. I am giving right input service. I am going to execute. Now I will go to desktop 3, most preferable desktop. So I am creating the first object and second object. Now now we are giving the input. Now whenever we gave the input, yes, it will act as an event handler method. We are registering the event handler method because we have written the logic in the else part and we gave the input. We gave the correct input. That is right. So it will act as an event handler method. Now we are going for triggering method. We gave the input, so this event will not raise. We gave the right input. Suppose if I will now, if whenever this query will execute, you can see we got the values of er dat, er zdt, er num, and vb type. So size sub rc is not equal to zero. So this particular event will also not raise. If event will not raise, yes, they, they event handler methods will not execute, yes, because we are not raising the event. Now, if I will go for next, now you can see we have LVER dat, LVER ZDT, because from here we are passing the values to our local variable LVER num and LVVB type. I'll just show you. I'll just click on to this. This is our ER dat, ER ZDT, ER num and VB type and we are displaying the values of these four variables. So this is full understanding of that topic because so many people has a confusion regarding, regarding registration of event handler method. So I took the example of multiple event handlers and at a time, we are doing, going for the registration of one event handler method based upon the particular condition. So this is all about, and in this particular video, we studied everything in the debugging mode. Firstly, we have not given any input, so it acted as event handler method. Then we gave the wrong input, it acted as an event handler method. Then we gave the right input and we are saying it will act as an event handler. But we have given the right input, so none of the event raised. If none of the event raised, so none of the event handler will also execute. And in the third scenario, we pass the right input and we got the correct output. So that's it in this video. Thank you.